This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Action Movie Guys podcast, episode 241, Batman Returns from 1992. I'm your host, Alex Figueroa. My co-host is... Nate from Nate Flicks Reviews. All right, Nate, I'm very curious here because I know this is the first movie you saw in the theater for Batman, right? Is this the no, one the that you saw? the first Batman the- movie I saw. Oh, the first, first Batman saw you the ever saw yeah. was Batman Returns. Yes. And this is the first time you're seeing it on 4K, right? That's yes. what you said. Okay, let us know your thoughts on that and how, what was your experience seeing Batman on the big screen for the first time ever? Yeah, so this was the first time I've seen this on 4K, which by the way, these 4Ks look great. This is my first time (laughs) watching any of these on 4K. It It looks fantastic. Wait till forever. Oh, that's the next one. So forever is the first one I saw in the theater. Mm -hmm. This is the first one I saw. I saw it at home. So it was great revisiting it in a new it's almost like watching it for the first time because I didn't see it at a theater, but now I'm watching it on like a, a large TV and 4K, you know? So, and it's not, even though I, it, well, we'll talk about it, but it's not one I revisit. I honestly don't revisit any of these movies that much, even though I'm a big Batman fan, but I think I, I do that on purpose so that I, they're always like, so that I always love them. I just watch them very sparingly. So it has been a while since I seen it, but this 4K was great. Yeah, I mean, this movie, it, it's very... I know it has a very big cult following mm-hmm. because th- I'm not too thrilled with this movie. And Ooh. and it's funny, I'm not a big fan of the film. I mean, even when I did the 4K review slash movie review and I said that a lot of people ripped me. Oh, yeah, you're crazy. This is one of the best ones, blah, blah, blah. So I was just like, it's very interesting to see that not, I mean, many people don't pick the first one to be that, yeah. the, you know, the best one. It's always the second, which is kind of weird for me. And I remember talking to Tribor Gigolo. He's a big one. He loves Batman Returns. Oh, yeah. And he's he commented like, really? on my uh, post on it on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. He's a very big fan on it. So this one, rewatching it, I was just like, you know, and there's still, the, 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 there's still things that irk me. And I want to talk to you about it because maybe... When I bring it up, maybe you will be like, maybe you could give it to me in a, in a if you like the movie from that point yeah. of view and see maybe we could figure this out. But other than that, look, the 4K looks amazing. Never saw it in the theater. I seen Batman Forever in the theater, but I didn't see this one in the theater. But other than that, let's check out what the critics and audience have to say about Batman Returns. Well, this one hit the old flippity doo on the Rotten Tomatoes because if you remember the first movie was in the 70s, I think 74 for critics, yeah. and it was in the low 80s for audience. This one is flip-flopped. This one has an 81 for critics. So, the critics like this one better. The audience is in the 70s, so a 73. So, pretty much the same scores but like Reverse. the opposite people like them pretty much. Yeah, you, you know, it's it's but They're still high both. No, it's a very high is they both fresh. Yeah. But it's it's a very intriguing thing to talk about because this movie, I can see why the mm-hmm. dip, but I can see why on the other side, why it's so beloved and why it's so great. Yeah. Um, I mean, you get a lot of great performances all over the place, but let's get right into the review because everyone wants to talk about it. Now, Michael yeah. Keaton returns, lead yeah. character, as Bruce Wayne slash Batman. So take it away. So to be honest, so I gave him a five in the first movie. And this one's interesting because at first... When I'm rewatching it now and I'm like thinking, I'm making my mental notes, you know, I'm watching this movie. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm making mental notes. What's going on with this character? What's going on with this character? And it, he's barely in it for the first like 30 minutes. Literally, he has the scene where they turn on the light. That's the first time Bruce Wayne shows up on screen. Iconic shot, by the way, with him with the light like on his face, looking oh, out the window. Oh, in, the, in, the, um, in his room? Yeah, in his, yeah beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, he comes out as Batman, and then that's it. He has that one scene, and then he's gone for a little bit again. But as the movie goes on, I do like what they did with the character. Again, I think, again, Keaton plays the role. He's great as Bat. I liked him... I think his Batman was a little stronger in this movie, in my opinion. The Bruce Wayne stuff was good with Selena Kyle, you know, and they make reference to Vicky Vale and like what happened with that whole thing. So he's got a little bit of an extra layer to him now. I really don't think he got worse. And if he didn't get worse, to me, it's still a five. So I gave him a five. I think from the first movie to this movie, it feels like a natural progression. You know what I mean? Like it's nothing earth shattering that happened between movies, but he doesn't, he's no worse. 
And they added the little layer of he has the, you know, the, it didn't work out with the girl and whatnot. And now he's kind of apprehensive with Selena Kyle. So I liked it. I like their chemistry, him and Michelle Pfeiffer, much better than him and Kim, Kim Basinger, to be honest. And maybe that's because Michelle Pfeiffer is a better actress, but I don't know. But I did like it. So yeah, I gave him a five. I still thought he was great in this. Yeah. All right. So here we go. This, this is where he's going to start. I gave him a four. I, mm. I dropped him one point. Okay. And he's still great. It's a great score. Four, I mean, we say great and then perfect five. I felt like the character, and and I'm going to take it from uh, Jay here because I totally agree with this 100%. This, Bruce Wayne went dark. Like, it was not, no, it's not the same character from the first movie. Well, in general, the entire over piece of this whole film went straight darker. A lot of sexual in the windows all over the place, which I was a very, I don't remember as much until I started watching. I was like, what the hell did he just say? And I had to rewind it going, whoa, that went. Little penguin. Penguin. (laughs) Um, Even (laughs) Selena Kyle said some sexual in the window. But, But we're talking about Batman. I felt like Batman went dark. Like his personality just switched from the first movie to the second. Now, it could all happen with the script. We always talk about this. This script was totally a 360 from the other one. Does it hurt it? I don't know. We're going to talk about it throughout the the whole breaking it down. But I, I just felt like Batman did a lot of things that I really, really like. I didn't agree with as, as the character, you know, everyone complains that he kills. I mean, this dude started killing from the first scene. I mean, he burned the dude with the back of the car. He torched him. (laughs) He literally torched him. Threw that bomb in the, uh, (laughs) in the sewer. Yeah, he threw the guy with the bomb and threw him in the suit. Yeah, so like, I was like, okay, so a lot of people complain about Ben Affleck killing people. I'm like, well, Michael Keaton (laughs) shot up in the two movies. He blew up Ace Chemicals with people in it. And this Batman Returns, he's killing people. Uh, uh, Another thing that I felt like it was kind of weird, and we'll go right into the villain right after this, was when the girl was on the roof and the penguin throws the umbrella, Mm -hmm. right? And then the bats come out and she goes, ah! And then she falls. I went, wait a minute. And I didn't think about it. And I didn't dawn on it because then I was sitting next to my wife and I was like, this is some shit. And she was like, what? I was like, Batman couldn't jump off the roof and grapple her. And she goes, what do you mean? I was like, in every iteration of Batman, he jumps off the roof. Doesn't matter what goes on. The lady is falling. He's throwing himself off the roof to save her. So I was like, what is going on in this scene? He just let the chick just die right there. And then I had a big problem with that. That was the, fr- I had, that was one big problem but we'll talk about it throughout the more but i just felt like his his choices and and things was just so not batman in this movie which again could be me but we'll talk about it throughout so i gave him a four you gave him a five let's get to the villains here now we got catwoman selena kyle michelle pfeiffer we got danny devito as the penguin and we got christopher walken as uh shrek Shrek. <laughs> Shrek. Um, yeah, Shrek. Yeah, so he's the minor villain. So this is the first superhero movie that did the whole like multiple villain thing. Yeah. Personally, I love it. So by the way, yeah, we're gonna maybe be a little opposite. I love this movie. So I am on team, I guess, Triborough Gigolo in this case. Follow him on Instagram if you don't. I love this movie. But anyway, as far as the villains go, I think Christopher Walken's cool as Shrek, but he's he's just one of those guys who's like a catalyst, you know, yeah, like he's pawn? not yeah, he's a pawn. He he's he, you know, he thinks he's in control of stuff, but he's not in control of anything. Michelle Pfeiffer, um amazing in this movie. I don't care. She is fantastic. I love I love her performance. I love her acting. I love how when she switches to Catwoman, like she has a Catwoman voice, but I like it. It's like it fits. It's very sultry, seductive. So I like I love the costume with the white stitching. Like I like how it looks. I like her look. I like her whole I like her whole vibe, to be honest with you. Now, the penguin, Danny DeVito, I think now and this will maybe go into storyline, but as it's written in the film, they decided to make Penguin like have almost traits of a penguin as far as like his hand is he's deformed basically yeah and so his fingers are together he's got a really pointy nose kind of makes him look like a beak but i think danny devito's performance in this movie is great i really do i think it's one of his like to me it's one of his most memorable scenes i love the part where they flip the elephant man line and he says i am not a human being i am an animal <laughs> so good like if you've never seen the elephant man people may not get that that reference but in that movie it's reversed it's i'm not an animal i'm a human being and he's like mm. nah i'm an animal so i love it i love dan devito in this i think he's great when i was a kid it always scared me when he bit that guy in the nose 
When he mm. was like, my nose is not gushing blood. He's like, what? And he bites him on the nose. Lo- I love it now, but it's uh, horrified me as a kid. But I think the villain element is strong. I think, you know, Catwoman, you know, I feel like Selena Kyle's always um, half and half a little bit. In this movie, she's probably more like 70, 30, like bad guy, <laughs> bad guy yeah. to like, you know, but that's OK. I was OK with it. Yeah, I, I gave them a five. I've, I've always thought they're iconic, both of them in their roles. So, yeah, I love it. Uh, yeah. Uh, when it comes to villain, I gave it a five. I, I thought that the villains in this movie were excellent. I, they, I had no problems with the villains. They were very quirky. I mean, they were all quirky, right? I did. Li- I mean, I was a little bit like, okay, why did we have two? Because it's like two origins in one movie. I mean, you had yeah. our um, Oswald Copperpot in the beginning, and then you got Selena throughout the film mm-hmm. when she gets thrown out the window and then she comes back. But I thought how the way they handled it worked. It, it worked very well. The way they handled it. Watching it now, I was like, okay, they they figured it out very well. We'll break it down. I like Oswald Copperpot. I agree. I, I think the penguin, and it's crazy because I think the iteration of this penguin, I like, right? Because he, he's very, like you say, he's very penguiny. Yeah. But I like the iteration also of the Bat Reese Batman. Like how he's very gangster. Good. Yeah. yeah. So, work. I mean, maybe later down the road he gets deformed with a limp. Somewhere down the line, so yeah, that he gets like that penguin. Scarred walk. up, but he doesn't yeah. look like a penguin. He's just a big guy, yet. like a fat guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I want to see if they're gonna turn him slowly into the Oswald Copperpot, like the what we know, right, with the limp and yeah. everything. But again, we'll talk about that later. But this one, I liked it. I thought, you know, Danny DeVito is a great actor. I mean, he he has some quirky roles all over the place, but I mm-hmm. mean, he picks the roles that work for him, regardless if people like the roles or not. I think this movie worked very well for him. I think he was good. Another performance that they killed. I don't think why they they, they didn't need to kill the penguin. I mean, honestly, yeah. he could have survived that that fall and everything. Selena Kyle, let's get to her because she's a big part of the comics. She's Bruce Wayne's love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they have a kid together, which is I think is Birds of Prey. It's her and Bruce Wayne's, and then they have another u- universe, which is the Huntress that mm-hmm. they have a kid with. Because I know Talia Agul. And Bruce Wayne has Damien Wayne. Damien, yeah. The one that everyone loves. I mean, which... The little bastard, Robin. The little... little brat. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But But that's the one everyone... Yeah, everyone (laughs) loves him because he's trained by Ra's al Ghul and then Bruce at the same time. So that is actually pretty cool. Anyway, I thought she was... She nailed it. She nailed it. I mean, she nailed it. I mean, the the whole... You're right. (laughs) When she starts talking Catwoman-y, she'll say, hey, little kitty. Uh, she has like that weird I'm cat woman. Yeah. Hear me uh, roar. <laughs> <laughs> it's hey, so good. Kitty. Yeah, yeah she has so like good. that that raspy voice as like she try- I thought Sultry. it worked very well. Yeah, 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 and I mean, she looked great in the suit. But look, other than that, I think the the chemistry between the two worked at times. There were other times it did not, but I thought it worked at the end. I thought it worked very well because I mean. Oswald Coppa probably didn't give a fuck. He just threw her on the, the he tried to kill her. <laughs> he said, what? He got mad at her because she didn't want to, she didn't want to see him. his hidden flipper trick or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, he wanted to bang her and she's like, yeah. well, hell no. And he just went, what? <laughs> he just yeah. hanged her on the, on the umbrella. I was like, holy shit. This took a dark turn in two yeah. seconds. I mean, even in that bed scene was when mad. He burned? was just like, hell yeah. He was like, what type of jelly you want? You want the yeah. non-scented? <laughs> <scented?" laughs> <laughs> yes. I and love she that put whole the scene too when yeah. they're when they're talking in the birdcage and it's cutting back and forth and they're like that the birdcage cool, yeah. is going and then she really put the bird in her mouth which is crazy and then she, had she to did? let it out for re- yeah they she really so she puts the bird in her mouth and then they cut the scene and then they go back they put it back in so that she can let it out but it was gotcha. re- she really did it yeah it okay crazy. I mean she's, she's like, a little bird so it's not like a big one <laughs> she, <laughs> she held that so shit for weird. a while though <laughs> she held it for a while if that was a real bird. While they were talking, yeah. that that yeah. was a long ass scene because he was yeah. just like, "Hey, kitty, kitty," and he went ching, and she was like, "Oh, okay." So yeah. again, developed pretty cool. Again, we gave him two fives. Okay, action yeah. scenes. Okay, so in the first movie, I thought the action was so so. In this movie, I actually think it's a little bit better. Now, I didn't. I thought it was going to be the same score. I gave the first one a three because I don't. I never watched this movie remembering. 
I remember the set pieces, but I never really thought of the action. But in this one, you got that opening scene, which I, I always like when the when the bad guys come out and they, they got the guy with the like the, the little gift that's a machine gun, the ghost from Ghost, the subway ghost guy. He's yeah, shooting yeah, yeah. a machine. You got like a mini gun. Um, you got like these trapeze artists, all this chaos. Uh, then a little later, then you got some explosions here. She blows up the store. She says, meow. (laughs) 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 Love it. It's a big explosion. Like, I feel like with this one, and I'm saving it for overall, but with this one, with the, it seems like they had a bigger budget. And I think the first one was a big budget movie, but this one just felt bigger and a little more polished in some of the action, in my opinion. I like the Batmobile stuff. Like the, they got this one, the little bat motorcycle thing you get when he's driving the <laughs> bat boat. I don't even know what this stuff is called. When he's in the sewer and he's driving the yeah, thing. Yeah, bat boat. Yeah, yeah, sure. I also love the scene where a uh, penguin takes control of it and he's in a tiny bat mobile. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a little swing. <laughs> It always cracked me up. Even when I was a kid, I was like, what is that? Why did they build him this little toy, like Batmobile? Well, whatever. So I thought the action, um, you still don't get a ton of Batman fighting. You do get some Batman fighting. He fights Catwoman, which was cool. You know, they they go, it's not the greatest fight you've ever seen, but he punches her, which is hilarious. And they, they fight. And then he fights some other guys, you know, with his one hit. Listen, that suit was not going to allow for like incredible. He can't even turn his head. So, you know, it's very stiff. But on the whole, I thought it was slightly better. I gave it a four. It's still not a five, but I gave it a four. Yeah, when it comes to action, I'm keeping it a three. It's a, It was good. I don't, the action was not, I mean, I, I agree. They elevated the explosions, but I mean, even if you look at the beginning sequence, it was a mess. You had dudes running all over the place, right? Batman is fighting like five dudes and it felt weird. It felt like they were waiting to get their asses beat. Like one dude runs towards him, and I understand yeah, what like, you're like saying a about the suit. Movie. <laughs> uh, no, no, I totally yeah. understand what you're talking about, but it yeah. this looked very like they were. It would look very choreographed. They were just like, okay, let's just wait. He's coming, whatever. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't feel engaged with the action in this movie I, at all. I thought the ending was weak when it came to the action. I, I felt like it. I don't know if you feel this, but I felt like towards the ending, they did not know how to end this movie because it looked very like there was no action towards the end. At least the Joker fought Batman, and there was that, and they knew how to end it, regardless if they killed Joker. This one did not feel like, and maybe that was the whole thing with the two villains, maybe. But I felt like the action could have been so much better for a sequel to this movie, especially with Catwoman. Yeah, they did fight. It thought it was cool, yeah. but I thought it could have been way more because Catwoman and Batman had some great duels. When you read the comics, they have some great fights. You know, and then even with Penguin, which I wanted to see Penguin go at at it with Batman with his stupid umbrella umbrella gadgets like he does in 1966. I thought it would have been funny. We didn't get much of that. His own Penguin shot him with with missiles. And I was just like, that's so fucking weak ass shit. (laughs) So sewer penguins. Yeah, the sewer penguins. Yeah. Yeah. So I I gave it a three. I mean, I thought it was good, but not great or perfect. So you gave it a four. I gave it a three. All right. Storyline. So I'm going to agree with you on something and I'm going to put it here in storyline. Sure. I think the main I love the story. So first of all, I love the first 30 minutes of the movie. Like I know I said Batman's barely in it, but they managed Tim Burton managed to really pull off two origin stories for villains in that first yeah. act of the movie. And they're both good. You get my man Pee Wee Herman. He's got a little deformed kid. They put him in the river like the Prince of Egypt. He goes up the river. The penguins rescue him. You know, he lives with the penguins, whatever. It sets it up like, oh, this is mysterious. Very Tim Burton-y, too, by the way. And the music, very, you know, Danny, again, the score is amazing in this movie, by the way. The music's great again. And then you get Selena Kyle introduced. He set her up. She works for Shrek. And then he, you know, he uh, pushes her out the window. She falls. She doesn't die. But she comes twisted, you know? So, yeah, they managed to pull off two origin stories in a solid way. I think everything after that's great. I love the storylines with the villains. I love their plot. I love them working together. And then they get mad at each other. And, they're, you know, I like it all. And I agree. here's where I agree with you. The last 30 minutes, it, it doesn't end as strong as the rest of the movie goes, in my opinion. It yeah. just seems like, I, I agree. It seems like maybe they ran out of ideas for the for the third act i wouldn't say it's bad but compared to like i feel like everything had a great build up and then the ending kind of like womp womp. you know what i mean a, a little bit so i agree with you i don't think it ends 
on a super high note. And that's where my deduction came in because I gave it a four. I think it is as good of a story as the first movie. Different, very different. But the ending is not as strong. If, if the ending, if this was like 20 minutes shorter and the ending was like really tighter i think it would be superior but i because of that i think it's about even so i gave it a four yeah when when it comes to storyline i it, it, ashamed but i i deducted some points but i, I didn't deduct as much and I, I gave it i mean i agree i gave it a four it's a great movie it's still entertaining i mean yeah i don't like it as much as other batman movies which we're gonna go talk about i'm not saying it's the worst one than batman and robin but I don't know. It's not one that I gravitate and put on all the time, to be honest. Actually, I don't even watch the first one. This is like the first time watching this in years. I don't watch the first one very much either. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm not going to make everyone think like, oh, I watch all these yeah. bad. Like I I haven't put these damn things on in, in God knows when. But when it comes to Batman and Robin, in terms, I mean, Batman and Returns, mm-hmm. the storyline, again, my nitpick is the last 30, like you said, the last 30 minutes. I don't like the fact that they again have Bruce rip off his fucking mask in front of everybody. I'm like, this is getting very very tiresome like this is the second movie that he wants to tell everyone that he's batman you had him yeah. tell ricky vale alfred brings her to the bat cave without his permission right again gives him the identity then you have uh what do you call it freaking uh in this movie he falls in love with Celine and kyle which we already know that's that was the big build-up but still <laughs> another character that he falls in love with and goes i gotta tell her who she is and she already knew because they had that you know that that whole she had the, the scar thing. Yeah. yeah, so so for me, I just felt like Jesus, like he didn't have to do it with him ripping. Like he, he could have said it in a way like he said the line and she knew. Like you could have did it that way. What happened if my man Christopher Walken survived? He knows Bruce Wayne is Batman now. So like right. to me, it's just some weird. It, it's just I, I didn't like that at all. I did not like, like I said, Batman letting that girl die when he could have just jumped off and saved her. Don't understand why that happened. There was just something. Oh, and, and then the penguin had blueprints of the Batman mobile like i was like where the hell did he get these damn blueprints from like certain things to me and i'm i guess it's just very nitpicking i guess but i mean look i gave it a four in terms of i I mean i gotta say it does feel like the animated series so Mm -hmm. that's why i'm giving it the benefit of the doubt i don't think the animated series he would have jumped off the roof to save the girl i'm just saying he would have threw himself off this dude was just like hmm (laughs) what happens when you fall fall. yeah and then he he looks over there he's like damn it she yeah, fell. and all these people saw me and my not my bats. <laughs> <laughs> Those are not my bats. Those are not my bats. <laughs> Those are not my bats. Damn it. That's not my bats. <laughs> and then he just runs away. <laughs> <laughs> he goes off the roof and yells. Yeah. Those and are not my cape, bats. He pulls his cape over that he just goes the other way. That, <laughs> <Yeah. be funny. laughs> that is bad. It might have worked. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> it might have worked. I mean, this movie has some comedy in it, you know. That would have been my fun. <laughs> <laughs> <He walked> away. <laughs> that would have been sick. Yeah, that shit would have been freaking uh, funny. Those are not yeah. my bags. Missed opportunity, Tim. Very missed, missed opportunity. opportunity. Look, yeah, I mean, look, all in all, I love the beginning. Oh, man, I thought it, they should have added a little bit more. I wanted it to be a little bit stretched out with, mm. with the, the Oswald Copperpot's parents. Yeah. You know, it could have been awesome if they were still alive and they finally got to meet Penguin. Oh, And yeah. then he does yeah. some twisted shit and kills him. Like Even having as a kid, I was something. always like, oh, I wish they were alive. He, didn't, <laughs> he, didn't <get> the, <laughs> he wasn't even that old. He was only like in his 30s, even though he looks horrible. He looked so 80, they could have yeah. been alive, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It could have been cool, right? They're drinking tea and he poisons them and they like, they fall in like a little penguin. A little penguin walks up with a note in its mouth and it's like, you're dead. (laughs) <laughs> that would be funny the, yeah. <laughs> a penguin serves him tea yeah. or something that would be what pretty funny I look, other than that look I gave we both gave it fours across the board overall so in my opinion this movie is way so I said something in the last re, the last Batman movie is that Tim Burton is way toned down in that movie it's not the most Tim Burton movie this one is way more Tim Burton So if you like Tim Burton, if you like his films, if you like his visual style, this Batman movie is way more of what he does than the first Batman movie. As far as visuals, 
tone, uh, ev- everything. Like it just feels way more like a Tim Burton movie to me. And I, w- I'm a big fan of his early stuff. I, I don't love everything he ever made, but you know, eighties, nineties, Tim Burton, I, I think is great. So I love it. I love the Christmas setting, you know, a lot of people say it's not a Christmas movie. Okay, sure. But it's set at Christmas time. So if you watch it at Christmas time, it works really well. Yeah, it's snowing all the time. I love the way Gotham looks in this. Like, there's like almost no daytime scenes, <laughs> like barely. It's pretty much nighttime all the time. And I just, this movie has a vibe that I just like. It's one of those things where, okay, yeah, there's some issues. I don't disagree with anything you said, like with him letting the lady fall. Yeah, that's true. And he does kill. Although I've never been in the team of, he can't, uh, since I was a kid watching these movies, Batman always killed people and I don't read comics like that. No. So I never cared. I was like, oh, you blow them up. They're bad. So, you know, I think it just has this vibe and this aesthetic that I really like. I enjoy watching it every time. The It's always the last half hour where I'm like, uh, I don't love it anymore. But the first 90 minutes I think are great, like fantastic. I gave it a four, same score as the first movie, but I prefer this, like, I would watch this one over the first Batman for me, but I gave okay. him the same score. So a four. Yeah, I gave it a I gave it a four also. I, I think it's a great movie. I think it still holds up. The last 30 minutes, I think, is the weakest part of the film. Mm-hmm. A lot of choice. You're right. They let it's out of they let Mike um Tim Burton do what he had to do, or he just like, I don't give a fuck. I'm doing it the way I want to do See, it. I made y'all a lot dirt. of money with that first movie. Remember that? Now yeah. I'm gonna do Tim Burton's Batman. <laughs> yeah, because this returns. Was, this was very dark. This movie yeah. was dark. I mean, it was way, I mean, mad dark. It looked great in 4K. The dark scenes look, oh, spectacular. Snow coming down looked amazing. The, the, The soundtrack was great. It sounded great. So... Yeah, I mean, there's no nip. Like I said, there was. I mean, if you want to look deep into it, you could find tons of like errors and things you'll be annoyed with. But honestly, I, it is what it is. I mean, when you think about it, you pull it back. Yeah, does Batman kill? Yes, he kills. Do I care? I don't care. As long as I enjoy the damn movie. That's why everyone right. keeps picking on Ben Affleck with a 50 caliber and killing all of them. I say, like, who gives a shit? He's getting kryptonite. Like, why do I care? Superman right. kills people too. Like, uh, does it, he kill I bad mean, guys? Then what's the big deal? Like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, it doesn't bother me. You can't do a code like that in a movie. You can't kill in a movie. You can't. And you can't tell me because Robert, I mean, even Robert Patterson, I don't even think, I think he did kill. He was throwing dudes off scaffolds if in the he end. Did- Kill them, then something's up. Some of yeah. those guys died for sure. They had to. Yeah. That last scene in the I could movie. See them doing the no killing with Superman because he's so super, he can somehow subdue them or whatever. Okay, fine, sure. But like Batman's a guy, he's killing bad guys. I'm okay with it. And most of the time he doesn't. Sure, but I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it. I like. I don't care. But anyway, I gave it a four. What is your total points? My total points is a 22 out of a 25. Pretty close to the first one. I think the first one I gave a 21. This one, I thought the action was slightly better. That's the difference. Other than that, the same scores. Great villains. Again, iconic. Great performances. And these first two movies had great casts. Like Jack Nicholson, Michelle Pfeiffer, Danny DeVito. Like these guys are all great actors. So yeah, I, I love it. 22 out of 25. Yeah, I gave it a 20 out of a 20. Uh, it's the film. Look, like I said, at the end of the day, is it an enjoyable movie? Absolutely. Is it a movie that if you go, hey, I want to put it and watch it in a marathon, you know, you're not freaking bored because the first two movies are really good. It's not like it's super bad. I mean, unless the last 30 minutes. <laughs> but other than that, it's a little boring at the end. Yeah. It's a little boring at the end. But other than that, it's it's actually it's actually a fun ride. I, I thought it was pretty good. I, a little bit weak with him becoming mayor. I felt like that was kind of a weak thing. Yeah. But well, I other like that than plot. that, it's okay. I, I, I liked it, but it's Poorly just it's unbelievable that people would like, yeah, vote for him. Because yeah. <laughs> he had no parents all of a sudden. They're, oh, he had no parents. Let's vote for him for mayor. This guy who looks like a, a freak. Yeah, no, no, I agree. But other than that, look, I think it was pretty good. All right, Nate, what is coming up next? Oh, okay. So next week or next episode, I should say, we got continuing in our bad action movie month and Alex I'm gonna be honest with you at this rate I don't know how many more of these months I can stomach but we're gonna continue with this one we got a little movie that you watched for the first time called Ultraviolet so we're gonna be doing that and then next week we got the first Batman movie I saw in the theater Batman Forever starring the song from Seal and also Val Kilmer so yeah we're gonna be doing a little Batman Forever I got a lot to say about that movie. I'm looking forward to it. So those are our next two episodes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, that has an all-star cast. You got Nicole Kidman. You Nicole got- Kidman, Val Kilmer, Jim Carrey, Tommy Lee Jones. 
Drew Barrymore. Chris O'Donnell, not that good, but he's there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Chris O'Donnell shows up to be yeah. annoying, but that's okay. I got things to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And then it's Kiss from a Rose. That's the, that's the yeah, love song. That song. Yeah, great song. But other mm. than that, <laughs> other than that, if you guys want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast between him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything action movie, guys, head over to youtube.com slash geeks and flicks for the video version of the podcast. And now you can listen to the podcast on YouTube, I believe. Just, I guess, search for it on the YouTube music and action movie guys should appear there we have episode one through 89 on youtube so i'm gonna work as fast as i can to get all these uh, episodes up there and then of course you guys want to follow us on our instagram account it's action movie guys podcast there too other than that i'm your host Alex figueroa my co-host is nate from netflix reviews be awesome to each other and geek out Geek out